Hallelujah. Good morning, family. God is good. And like always, it's always an honor standing here and preaching to my family and preaching to the world. I'm so, so happy for, the, uh, for, for you guys, for everybody in here. Um, and I'm so glad that we have a family in Christ where we can come to and like just have relationships with people you maybe never knew before. So before I start with my message, of course, I want to start with a prayer. God, I thank you for this wonderful morning. I thank you for all the people in here and outside who are going to see this message. God, I thank you that you are the God who just showed us what our real identity is. Uh, and we are so glad that we have a God that sees us, who helps us, who likes, just looks after us and helps us in every situation. Father, please let this message be a message where my family, my brothers and sisters can learn from, uh, where they can learn how you function, but uh, more so how they can learn like really living with you and having a really living relationship with you. God, I thank you for everything I say in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. So then let's open our Bibles in Mark chapter 10, verse 17. And we're going to read from um, verse 17 to verse 22. The Bible says in Mark 10, verse 17, as, Je uh, as Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Uh, why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except of God alone. You know the co uh, commandments: you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimonies, you shall not uh, defraud, honor your father and mother. Yeah, honor and, uh, father and mother. Teacher, he declared. All, the, uh, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus looked at him and, uh, and loved him. One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have a treasures in heaven. Then, then come follow me. At this, uh, at this the man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great well, I want to, this la uh, last verse, the Bible tells us, at this, the man's face fell, he went away sad. I want to ask you a question, what is the most precious, like the most precious thing you own? And the follow-up question is, could you? Give it away when you would know that you have a guaranteed place in heaven. Most of us would say, yes, if I know for, for sure that I'm going to uh, go to heaven, I would. And I think personally that the answer to, to this question is not, that, is not as easy as we sometimes think. Sometimes... We don't, <laughs> we think we would do those things, we would give up everything, not knowing that we, our heart is so much connected sometimes to those uh, things. When we go back to, the, to the, uh, this verse, we see that the a rich man, he thought that Going to the kingdom, like go, having eternal life, was his first priority. Until Jesus showed him that it's not. Just with one simple, not question, with one simple task. To give away his money to the, uh, to the poor. And sometimes we think that having eternal life is really our 
first of priority, we're gonna go to uh, to uh, to heaven. I have to do everything I can, and then God tells us, "Hey, go outside and preach the word of God." And you're like, oh, "I'm not that of a really, I'm not that talkative. I'm not really the guy who wants to talk to other people." Or maybe uh, he, he tells you, "Hey." I want you to sing in front of everybody. I want you to worship me in front of everybody. And you're like, ah, I love to sing, but I mostly sing in my bathroom or at home and all those things. And we think that eternal life is really our first priority, but it's sometimes not. And to go back to the rich, maybe we don't know the Bible don't really tell us uh, why he he left sad. Um, just tells us that he had a great wealth, and so we can maybe he didn't want to give it away because he had a certain lifestyle. Maybe he lived a certain lifestyle that he couldn't even imagine living, as not living in this lifestyle. Uh, maybe he worried about things like, hey. If I give my money away, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to like, where, what I'm going to buy. How can I buy stuff without even having money? But there's a verse in Matthew chapter 6, in verse 31, it says, So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all those things, or all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all those things will be given to you as well. The Bible tells us clearly: don't worry about things like, "Hey, what can I, what I'm gonna eat, or what do." What shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? Because God knows what you need and he's going to provide. But first of all, seek the kingdom of God. And that's the thing that this rich man forget. He should like focus on God. He should focus on, on the kingdom first. If you really, if his first priority uh, is like come, having eternal life, then he shouldn't focus about Hey, what I'm going to eat tomorrow? Or if I go give my money away, what I'm going to do afterwards? He should just focus on God. And that's the same for us all. I know sometimes it's so hard because we have families, we have jobs and all those things. And we think, hey, God, I can't leave that. But trust me, if you trust God, God would never like push you, put you in a situation where you couldn't live where you would die because he knows what you're capable of he knows where he can uh, like put you in to not only survive but to be a light without harming you of, of course you're gonna sometimes you're gonna have like hard times of course it's it's, it's normal okay but god is gonna provide everything you need so let us like store up treasures in heaven, not here on earth. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, Do not, uh, do not store up your, uh, yourself treasures on earth, like I said, where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and venom do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Bible just shows us, hey, don't focus on those things here on earth. Focus on the, on the things in heaven. And let us like live a life so where we can say, our heart, our heart and our love is strictly, our first priority is like seeking God's kingdom. 
Because where our heart is, or where our like treasures are, let's start by this, where our treasures are, there's our heart. And where our heart is, there is, trust me, you will endure things, you will invest time, you will invest energy, you will invest your whole resources without even giving them the second thought. For example, the best example I have are parents. Parents are, are great. As older you get, um, the more, uh, as, as more you just realize what an incredible job parents do. Like, um, there's, there's, there's a family in my life uh, who just uh, had a little kid, uh, I think a couple of months ago, and she's, but she's still little. And for me, it's always interesting seeing how they are like sacrifice themselves and everything they have just for that little kid. Because that's their treasure. Their kid is their treasure. And let us have like the same heart for the kingdom of God where we just leave everything or do whatever God wants us just because, hey, the kingdom of God is our treasure. So I really, really want to encourage you. There's so much more in your life. You can do so much more by just trusting God and trusting that His plans are the best plans. Amen? Hallelujah. God, I thank you. I thank you for your, just for your word, for your living word. Knowing that you are going to provide for us when we seek you first, when we seek your kingdom first, that's the most wonderful thing we could hear or just know. God, I know that sometimes it's hard for us as human to leave everything or just to change the directions. But I just pray that we today we all make the decision to Trusting you and trust your plans because you, God, you have the best plan. So I, name, I say in the name of Jesus, amen. God is good.